Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there hunters and welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. Today in Remnant, as you may have guessed, we will be showcasing the Vulcan's detonator and its uses. In the recent balance patch, it received a buff which let its dot scale a bit better than it was before. While the necklace was already good on its own, it's a great necklace now and should definitely be considered when making builds. Or at least builds that want to scale mod power. So you may or may not know what the Vulcan's detonator can apply to, but it's quite a bit actually. For instance, the primary shots of Hive Cannon and Pride of Iskall handguns explode on hit, which means that this amulet will grant them 25% damage to their primary shots and apply a fire dot on hit. So this is a great scaling option for mod power setups as you can actually scale your primary weapon and mod damage at the same time with this necklace. That being said, the fire dot seems to be a smaller scaling dot on these primary shots compared to other explosive mods, probably because it is a spammable primary shot and not a mod. It is still a decent dot, like it usually hits for about 17 or 18 a tick depending on resistances, which is great, it's free damage. But other applications tend to scale about 30 plus depending on what you're scaling and what the enemy resistances are. The other added bonus here is that the fire dots tick grant you mod power, so you can use this to generate mod power over time, which we will 100% be using later on. So the first thing here is probably the odd man out. Using a range setup and Vulcans is not really ideal, since range builds want to scale a ton of damage on your long gun shots, not really your mods. And sadly, there are no long guns with shots that count as explosives, so you're going to be scaling your handgun and mod only, which can be fine, it's just not ideal. So here we're using Hive Cannon since we can scale its damage, we can still get Corrosion out of it, we get Fire Dots, and then the Long Gun can basically be whatever you want, I just like Shotguns and Coach Guns. I'm using Icy Mist here not only because the Dot is insanely strong, but it also will apply Frozen to enemies and Fire Dots because anything with an AoE Circle is an explosive. And since we will be having Corrosion, Fire, and Frozen statuses basically all the time, I'm going to be using Punisher's Ring here for 15% all damage, which is pretty good since we'll scale our range damage and help our Icy Mist a little bit. Other rings can be swapped out depending on bosses and targets. Armor Set is your choice too. Hunter's is just the go-to for range damage, but if the target doesn't have a weak spot, Bandit with Gambler's Ring is a great option. The next set here is a mixed setup, which I believe this is where the necklace really shines. So overload explosions count as explosions. Shocker. Ah, shock, get it? Yeah, okay. So this means that we're going to be using Voice of the Tempest and Blink Token to be applying overload detonations. Blink Token does count as an explosion as well, so we do get to scale the 25% damage from Vulcan's detonator on top of triggering overload explosions and getting fire dots. So we can poke with Voice of the Tempest and then blink at the target for a nice boom, then get the overload proc and get two fire dots on that way. Hive Cannon is still going to be our go-to even post nerf since we can still scale off Detonator and Void. The damage is going to be great for clearing trash and we still want Corrosive status when possible, so this is just kind of a win-win here. For rings, Supremacy is an optimal choice since we'll be using all forms of damage, however it does have that high risk associated with it because once you take any amount of damage, you're going to remove it. You can also run Burden of the Gambler, Akari Warband to scale the overloads and crits off those, and in general just more damage if there's no weak spot available. Or you can run Prismatic Diamond Ring since we'll be using Corrosive Fire and Thunder damage. You have plenty of choices, your call. Now if you want to stay in close, you can also change out the Void Armor for Scrapper Armor, since it's technically better if you're within 5 meters of the target all the time, but you do need to hug them if that's the case. Void Armor is just an overall safer setup. Now the rest of the sets here are where Vulcan really stands out, which are Mod Power sets. Now Vulcan is a direct upgrade to Galenic Charm, assuming your mods explode, so there's no reason not to use it. And as I mentioned before, this will let us scale our primary damage shots if you want to use Pride or Hive Cannon, so that's an added bonus. So the first setup here, we're going to be using Hive Cannon for Corrosion and Unstable Quills, which again do count as an explosion, which is absurd to me. Quills was already insane, but now we get free dots on top of it, and it generates mod power from the fire dots. Dude, it's just great. Rings are standard Burden of the Follower and Spirit Stone, so we can spam Quills as much as possible. The guns don't really matter again. I just like Ricochet Rifle because it's great for generating mod power, but you're free to use whatever you like. You can technically run this with a mod swapper setup running Breath of the Desert and Quills, but since Breath of the Desert isn't an explosion, we're not going to be scaling it with the Vulcan Detonator, so I opted just for Corrosion to scale Quills as much as possible. Plus, you can still spam them really quick with the Fire Dot mod generation. The next one is more of a gimmick than a solid option. Storm Call Thunder Strikes count as explosions too, which is fun because you can just use that to run through the map, strike enemies, and if they don't die from Storm Caller, the Fire Dot definitely will. 
So it's fun for clearing and doing zones, but Stormcaller isn't good for bossing at all. So I wouldn't use this like anywhere else, but just kind of memeing through zones. Now the secondary mod can be basically whatever. Since Stormcall isn't great for bossing, I slapped on Explosive Shot, which scales great. It hits for like 3k plus and dots, plus it does AoE, and it generates very fast. You get three of them, so yeah, it's just a really good source of single target DPS and technically an AoE. It's a gimmick setup, but it actually works, so give it a try if you ever wanted to use Stormcaller and didn't have a chance to. It's actually really fun with Vulcan Setonator. Now in my Lab Armor video, I did talk about another weird gimmick build with super slow setups using Icy Mist and Spore Bloom. We can use that here with Vulcan Setonator to get free fire dots on top of the AoE slow dots that already hurt a ton. Since we don't have Corrosion, we'll be missing out on some overall damage, but double dots really hurt here, and even without range damage scaling, Spore Bloom hits like a truck. Dot builds won't ever be the best DPS builds out there, but the slow utility will definitely help manage elites and bosses, and I've also kind of had a soft spot for dots, so I, mean, I really like this setup. The last build here is actually pretty nasty, it's one I'm pretty sure most people have connected the dots on already. Secret Beetles with Vulcans and Soul Ember. Soul Ember scales the Beetles 25%, Vulcans will also scale them 25% since they do explode, Lab Armor multiplies them by 50%, and you get your free fire dots. The fire dots here is not just for damage either. Since I mentioned early on the fire ticks will generate mod power, you can see just how much you can sustain these beetles off just the fire dots and burden of the follower. I've never really been a fan of summons in this game, but the sustain is great here. Again, I opted for hive cannon since I want the corrosion per the usual, but a second summon is a fine option here as well. Now, oddly enough, the warg here is bugged, or maybe hive cannon is. I can't reapply Corrosion after it has burrowed, so I tried using Corrosion Aura to keep it up as long as possible, so let's kind of swap it in and out of primaries here. So that's some ideas for Vulcan Sentinator. It's not really something I'd use for range damage setups, but for mod setups it's fantastic. And for mix sets, it works perfectly. It's just a great necklace that got a nice buff, so it's definitely up there with some of the best necklaces. Uh, give it a try if you get the chance, and that's all for me. Thank you all for watching, good luck out there hunters, and whatever you may be hunting.